This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. The final race of horse racing's big three is coming up this weekend. It is the Belmont Stakes. We've got Christina Blacker of FanDuel TV here to preview that for today. We have got Mystic Dan in the field. Sees the gray is here, but neither of those horses is a favorite to win at Saratoga this weekend. So it's going to be a fun race and a loaded field. We'll break that all down with Christina today to get her read on this year's field. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Saunas. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Joined here, as mentioned, by Christina Blacker. You can find her on X at Christina FDTV. Check her out on FanDuel TV, where she is an analyst, host, and reporter. Christina, it is a delight to get you back on the show today. How you doing? It's great to be here. I'm I'm doing well. I can't believe we're already at the third jewel of the Triple Crown. You know, our lead up to the Kentucky Derby starts all the way back in September of the two-year-old season for these horses. So this is such a big runway to that first Saturday in May. And then you feel like you blink and the Preakness is here. That two-week turnaround is really quick. Now we've had the three weeks to sort of settle in, really analyze these horses coming up to the Belmont. But in a way, you, know, you don't want it to come because that means the Triple Crown is over. And then we kind of switch gears and we start talking Breeders' Cup. But it's a really fun time to be a racing fan and of course to follow some of the big stars of our sport absolutely and it's been a fun stretch i know uh you know you were uh very helpful for us leading into the kentucky derby talking about torpedo anna uh heading into that event so it seems like i know the answer to this question but how has the the season been for you the past couple of months it's been really busy, but busy in the best way in yeah. that, you know, I do this job because I love horses and I yeah. love being around good horses and I love being there on those big days. And I've talked about it before. My favorite part of our job is watching people win, whether yeah. that's the trainers, the grooms, the horsemen, the horse players that are gambling on these races. So being able to be there firsthand and to watch it has just been really special. And you talk about Torpedo Anna, she's running on one of the undercard races for oh. Belmont Festival weekend. So we have the Belmont. But what's important to remember is that this is an entire festival of racing. So some of the best horses from the country in their respective divisions are all going to be lining up throughout Thursday, Friday, Saturday in New York. Well, I hope you get to bunker down and just kind of lock in and enjoy yourself throughout this weekend. We're going to pick Christina's brain about those races for this weekend, letting you know her favorite horses for this year's Belmont Stakes in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Our preview of the NBA Finals is now up with Tom Vecchio. He joined us breaking down his thoughts on Mavs versus Celtics. We'll talk Stanley Cup Finals tomorrow as well. So a lot of good stuff here on the feed for this week to get those as they are posted make sure you're subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcast you can also find us on FanDuel TV plus and the FanDuel YouTube page the NBA finals are almost here but it's not too late to get in on the action with FanDuel right now new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets with any winning five dollar bet that's under fifty dollars used on same game parlays, live bets, championship futures, and much more. There is no better place to bet all the playoff action than America's number one sports book, FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Must be twenty one plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only ten dollar first deposit required. Bonus issued as non withdrawable bonus bets, which expire seven days after receipt. Not available in North Carolina. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Colorado, D.C., Illinois, Iowa, Kentucky, Michigan, New Jersey, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Tennessee, Vermont, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777. Or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700. Visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland, 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia, 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. 
Now, Christina, we'll dig into the actual field here in a second. But this year's Belmont Stakes is being run at Saratoga Racecourse as opposed to Belmont Park. Some renovations going on at Belmont. So moving it forward this year, what should people know about this specific track, both relative to Belmont, but also the other two Triple Crown races we've seen so far this year? Yeah, so Saratoga is the oldest sporting venue in the United States. So there's a lot of history at Saratoga, and some of the best champions that we've had in horse racing have competed there. It's also known as the graveyard of favorites, they say, because a lot of big odds-on favorites have run very poorly at Saratoga in years past. So there's definitely some opportunities as far as the horse players go to find some value, to find some prices there. As you mentioned, at Belmont Park, they've put in a multi-million dollar, multi-year investment investment to the facility. They're renovating Belmont. So Belmont is not being used at all for racing right now. So we've moved this third jewel of the Triple Crown to Saratoga this year and next year. And the way it changes the race most significantly is that it changes the distance. So the Belmont is traditionally run at the mile and a half distance. And that's why we call it the test of the champion, because you don't really ask three-year-olds to run a mile and a half this early in their career. This would be the first time that any of them would ever encounter that. Because of the configuration of Saratoga, they can't run a mile and a half race. So we're running it at the mile and a quarter, which is the same distance as the Kentucky Derby. So we run the mile and a quarter in the Derby, a mile and three sixteenths in the Preakness as per usual. But now we're cutting back to the mile and a quarter again for these horses. As far as your handicapping goes, It's a little easier in that you've seen a lot of these horses run a mile and a quarter. So we know who can run the mile and a quarter. We don't have that question of the distance. I think had there been a triple crown on the line, a lot of people would put a little asterisk next to this Belmont into this year because if that horse was going on to try and achieve that you know, feet, if you're not really running the mile and a half, are you really winning the traditional triple crown? But we don't have a triple crown on the line. We had Mystic Dan in the Kentucky Derby. We had Seize the Gray in the Preakness. They're both in this field, but the distance does does change a little bit. I would also say that in general, New York racetracks are a little deeper. Their surfaces are more sand-based, a little bit more sandy. They actually call Belmont Big Sandy. That's one of the sort of nicknames. I don't see Saratoga personally as deep as Belmont, so maybe it's a little easier to get over for some horses but you know they're going to put on quite a show they're putting together that whole festival Uh, the town loves the racing i think if you're going as a fan it will be an incredible experience i'm looking forward to the race just as much as i would if we were at the mile and a half at belmont but it does have that little tweak and i think without the triple crown on the line we're avoiding some of those big debates of like is this really a triple crown that sort of thing for sure, which is beneficial for us because we want to just focus on the fun stuff yeah, with, with the exactly. horses and celebrate them. Now, I want to go back to, you mentioned this is the graveyard of favorites. Does that change, given we have more info on these horses? Like you said, we've seen them run this distance before. Does that decrease some of the volatility we've seen at Saratoga in the past, given we have pretty good data on what to expect in these specific horses? I think so. I think you could argue that because we've seen the distance, you know, we don't have those big big question marks. But I think also there's just other maybe environmental factors that would come into play with, you know, traveling upstate to New York at times in the summer, it can be very hot, very humid. I think things like that really contribute to an athlete's performance. I know I personally don't like running when it's a million degrees outside. So (laughs) I think that's part of what has happened. And I think also because of the prestige of Saratoga, Everybody wants to win there. And there were times that maybe you take a shot with the horse because you want to go home in all your glory winning a big race at Saratoga during the summer. Whereas at other times of the year, you would be a little bit more conservative. You would wait, you would space out your races a little more. And because of that boutique meet, you have that you know short window that they're running in the summer. People go for it and understandably so. But with the Belmont, I think these three-year-olds have been targeting this race, a lot of them. You have quite a few horses that ran in the Derby, skipped the Preakness, and are now fresh for the Belmont. So I don't see some of those factors contributing. And because we have the cut back to the mile and a quarter, I think the data is right there really clearly in front of us to try and make selections. Now, you talk about freshness, and that may be part of why the two winners we've seen so far, the two crown jewel races, are not the favorites. Those are Mystic Dan and Seize the Gray. Seize the Gray, the Preakness winner, Mystic Dan at the Kentucky Derby. Seize the Gray 8-1 to one on the morning line, and Mystic Dan at 5-1. to one. So neither horse among the top two favorites for this weekend. But they've proven they can do pretty well against tough fields. So, Christina, what's your view of those two horses entering the Belmont Stakes? 
Let's start with Mystic Dan with the Kentucky Derby winner. So he draws post three for the Belmont. Mystic Dan was 18 to one in the Derby. I think anytime you have a quote unquote long shot winning the Derby, those horses don't always get the same respect coming back in the subsequent legs of the Triple Crown. And let's also remember Mystic Dan, he's run through all three, even without a Triple Crown on the line. He ran in the Preakness. And I think in the Preakness, he really backed up his Derby performance. He was a solid second in the Preakness behind Seize the Gray. Coming into the Derby, the question marks with Mystic Dan were, he seemed to be at his best over a track with some moisture in it. When we get weather, when you get a sloppy surface, his best races were on surfaces along those lines. He ran on a fast track in the Derby. He had a beautiful trip, a ground saving trip, sneaking through along the rail. So much went right for him. And there are some people that have argued that Sierra Leone actually ran a better race coming from so far back off the pace and ending up so wide. Had you flipped the trips, you know, what happens between those two horses and is Sierra Leone on raw ability more talented? I see Mystic Dan is really improving, and I don't think he's getting the respect that he deserves and that he has proven winning the Derby, second in the Preakness, getting faster with every race. So I give him a big shot in here to win it and also to hit the board. I would not ignore him at all. With Seize the Gray from the inside post, I actually like the inside post for him because I've looked at a lot of his races. So Jaime Torres, who rode him in the Preakness, put him on the lead. And I think there are two sort of contributing factors that accounted for that win. A, he's better when he's on the lead. B, he's a son of Arrogate and there was moisture in the track at Pimlico and they absolutely love it. So speaking of data coming into the Preakness, the offspring of Arrogate, if you filtered every sire in that field, were best on and off track. So he got the two things that he really needed for that win. Now he might get some rain for this weekend. It's looking like we'll have some showers here and there. So he might end up with the track he wants. He does have the inside post, so he very easily could take the lead. But now I think everybody knows you can't just leave him out there on the front end like they did in the Preakness. You can't, you know, you have to respect this horse. He's going to keep going. He's not coming back to you. So of the two, I think Mystic Dan is a little more poised and a little more gutty and just sort of gritty in that he doesn't need things to always go his way to maybe hit the border to win it. Seize the gray. I see him on the lead. I see him involved. I see him maybe getting a piece of it, but I'm not sure he pulls off that shocker again to steal it gate to wire. Yeah, the, the cat's out the bag with Seize the Gray in yeah. that approach uh, from the Preakness. So you mentioned Seize the Gray drawing post position one. Were there any other takeaways for you as far as the post draw, or do you think that in a 10 horse field that might not matter quite as much? Yeah, not really. I don't think there's any any other horses in here that greatly benefit from the post position or greatly, you know, have a an issue with their post or have something to overcome. Doorknock would be one horse I would kind of point out. Similar to Seize the Gray, I think we've learned about him that he needs to be on the lead and he actually prefers to be inside of horses rather than on the outside, which is generally the opposite. Most mm -hmm. horses would prefer to be on the outside because in that circumstance, you're the one kind of applying the pressure to sure. that horse at the rail. Doorknock is a little more of a gamer. Like he likes the pressure of another horse and that's what he responds to. When you leave him out on the outside or you leave him shuffled back, he loses focus. He kind of looks around and he's not really giving his all. So I think had Doorknock been on the rail, that could have helped him. But that's not to say that he can't really send from where he is and try to get to that position. Okay, so Doorknock drew post position six and 15 to one on the morning line. We've kind of danced around the fact that, uh, talking about Seize the Gray and Mystic Dan, that they're not the favorites. And those are Sierra Leone and Mindframe. Sierra Leone nine to five on the morning line. Mindframe is seven to two. So, Christina, what to you sets those horses apart from other horses to earn the respect they've gotten on that morning line? So with Sierra Leone, I think a lot of people believe that had he not been lugging in in the Kentucky Derby, and by lugging in, I mean coming down the stretch, he was leaning on the horse to his inside. Mm -hmm. And constantly throughout the stretch, his rider was having to pull the right rein to try and straighten him out and keep him on his own path. Anytime you're correcting a horse, you're not going as fast as they can, and they're not giving you all they have. So had he run straight, there's a clear case. I mean, he was beaten like this, right. you know, on that photo. So Sierra Leone, with dropping back off the pace, circling wide, 
all of those factors, he really ran a heroic race in the Kentucky Derby, and he was second by a nose behind Mystic Dan. He's also not done anything wrong throughout his career. He's first or second in all five starts, and the fact that he's fresh really adds to his case this weekend. There are two other changes that Chad Brown has made with Sierra Leone. So his regular rider throughout the Kentucky Derby and kind of the pre-Derby season was a rider by the name of Tyler Gaffleone, one of the best in the business. He's changing to Flavie and Pratt. I personally see them as very much on par, but I will say that Pratt is really known for his strength in finishing. And so that's upper body. That's really his workouts that he's, you know, done. And I've, I've seen him in the gym. We've done features where he balances on those giant medicine balls and is just like this with weights. I mean, the guy, the guy is a machine and yeah. he's doing that on his day off after riding five days a week. So I think Flavian is someone that can contribute and help this horse. The second major, major, major change is they've changed the bit in his mouth, Sierra Leone. There are so many different bits that you can use with a horse. Certain horses respond better to certain types. The traditional bit that most horses will run in and train in and that you start a horse in is called a snaffle. And it's a little bit flexible. It moves back and forth. And it's a little bit softer of a bit. But when you pull your rein, like if I'm pulling the right rein, because of that flexibility, I'm engaging the right part of the bit. If I pull the left rein, I'm engaging the left part of the bit and you have that flexibility. The bit that they're going to use is called a houghton and it's a straight bar. So the straight bar goes into their mouth like any bit and then it kind of secures under their chin. When you pull the right rein of a houghton bit, you engage the whole bit because it's straight and vice versa, you engage the whole bit. It's like power steering. So I think you put this really strong rider on Sierra Leone, you put this different piece of equipment on, and I think he's finally going to run straight. So maybe we <laughs> finally see the best that Sierra Leone has, and that's why he's a deserving morning line favorite. And I did end up picking him. I picked him in the Derby, and how am I not gonna pick him coming back to the Belmont with all of these changes and with the fact that he's fresh and that he ran such a good race? in the Kentucky Derby. For mind frame, the 10, he's only run twice. He's very light on experience, but he's two for two. And in his debut, he ran a 103 buyer speed figure, which is the fastest figure on debut of any horse that we have seen in this entire crop, going all the way back to September when we started. So he's the late bloomer. He's finally getting here, but on raw ability and on figures, maybe he's the best horse in this entire class. We don't know. We'll find out. He has a lot to prove. Uh, he's like a bull. He's so strong out there. I really, really like him, but he has a very different style to Sierra Leone. He wants to be on the front end, whereas Sierra Leone will be coming from off the pace. Mindframe has had two perfect trips in his first two races. He's capitalized on those trips as he should have. But until you get a horse kind of in trouble, for lack of a better word, or, or maybe facing some adversity where they have a horse to their outside or they get stopped and they have to readjust their momentum. You don't really know how they're going to react to that. We saw that problem with Fierceness. Fierceness, who was the favorite for the Derby, always wanted things his own way. Maybe mind frame is the same, or maybe he's gutsy on top of all these amazing speed figures and he's just going to blow the doors off this field and we will only be talking about him in the second half of this season. The experience is a concern, but the, I think, raw ability is not. Uh, we got like visual analysis of the bits, which is like a great I have the bits upstairs if you want to see them because I just go. did a whole I mean, like, like feature on them yesterday. It's perfect. <laughs> so we got bit analysis with like hand diagrams, which is why you should watch on <laughs> FanDuel TV Plus or the FanDuel YouTube page. So you got to pitch in for that. We got workouts from Flavian Pratt. Like we got everything in that answer, Christina. So like, you know, bring in the full house. You are unloading the clip here for the last triple crown race. I, I hope I'm not rambling, but yeah, I no, mean, I feel perfect. like I know I these horses and these people so well. And, you know, it's, I say it often, horse racing is a lifestyle. It's not really a job. Like you're in it right. or you're not. And when you're really in it and you hear these, like the second I heard they're changing the bid on Sierra Leone, I was so excited. I was like, this is right. it. This is, We've the, got the, this is the secret sauce. This is what we needed. Let's to dump the notebook. Dump finally. the notebook with Christina Blacker right <laughs> exactly. here on covering the spread. Now, I think you kind of alluded to this. Uh, and talking about Sierra Leone, backing them at the Derby. If I give you one bet for this race, which horse are you turning to for the Belmont Stakes? I'm betting Sierra Leone, but I do think he's going to be the favorite. So I don't think you're getting much of a price there. I, I would probably just be playing a cold exacta. I'd keep Sierra Leone on top. And then in that second spot, I 
think Seize the Grey is on the lead. I think Mind Frame's right there. I think Mystic Dan is right there. I'd probably go 9-1 if I was going to just play Cold Exacta looking for that value. I think Seize the Grey goes up in price, and I don't think he gets as much respect as he deserves. And I... I I'm afraid the lack of experience is going to catch up with Mindframe. I will love to see him throughout the later half of this summer, and I think he's going to really learn a lot and build off of this race. But I think he'll be over bet. I, I think he's going to come down in price. I think that flashy record and Todd Pletcher, people love these connections. I read Ortiz is a leading rider in the country. I wouldn't want to take shoot too short of a price on a horse like that that has a lot to prove. So I'd go 9-1 if I had one bet to make. Okay, and that is on the cold exacta there for uh, Sierra Leone and sees the gray, the nine to one there. That's where Christina is turning for the Belmont Stakes. Now, you mentioned that this is kind of like a festival and there are a lot of other races this weekend. And it's possible you've not handicapped those races yet. So if you haven't yet, that's okay. We can always, uh, you know, circle back I've looked at a few. Don't worry. to your Twitter. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So when you look at those other races throughout this weekend, any other horses you're targeting uh, for Saratoga? Yeah, so in the race just before the Belmont, which is race 11, it's the Manhattan. It's a race on the turf course. I like the six in there. Alrifa is the horse's name. Alrifa comes from Europe. Alrifa is a newly turned four-year-old this year. And in his three-year-old season, he was second by three quarters of a length to a horse by the name of Ace Impact. Ace Impact went on to win the Arc de Triomphe, which is the most prestigious race in France and one of the more prestigious in all of Europe. He was retired at six for six. He was the world's best rated three-year-old at time form 128. And he's a lightning fast finisher 33.05 is how he finished the arc and Alrifa was right there with him in the prep race for the arc they brought Alrifa back in a group one at Fran in france on april 28th he was fourth by a half length at a mile and five sixteenths over soft turf i mean it's just like as grueling a return race as you can get a long distance a soft turf and he was barely beaten there i think Alrifa comes to new york builds off that last race and the firmer ground even if they get some rain in New York. It's going to be so much firmer than anything he's ever encountered. I think he flies over that turf course. He's six to one on the morning line. I think you get every bit of that. Chad Brown has a really nice horse to his inside by the name of Program Trading, the five. I think he's the best American in there. But in these turf races, you kind of look to the Euros. I think some of the other Euros will get more attention because people are sleeping a little bit on Al Rifa. I know he's been second and he's been fourth in those last two starts, but it's who he's running behind and it's how they've campaigned him. So Al Rifa in the Manhattan. You could even play a double if you wanted to go back to that one wager. Take Al Rifa in the Manhattan to Sierra Leone in the Belmont. Perfect. That is Alrifa. That is race 11 on Saturday. Uh, the, the Manhattan, the six post Alrifa, six to one on the morning line there. That is Christina Blacker. Make sure you check her out on X at Christina FT TV. Find her work over on FanDuel TV as always. Christina, absolute delight to get you back in the mix for today. Uh, it was, like I said, fantastic to see the full diagram of the bits and hear about Flavian Pratt as well. Appreciate the time. It's been fun talking to you throughout this derby season, this uh, triple crown season. Good luck to you enjoy the racing and hopefully i'll talk to you again soon i appreciate it always there's some great racing through the summer so hopefully we get a chance to talk again maybe travers or pacific classic sign me up i am fully <laughs> in for that as well again thank you christina we'll talk to you again soon that is christina blacker check her out on x at christina fd tv and find all the uh, fantastic work as well over on fanduel tv this week and every week that is all that we have here for today on covering the spread as mentioned we are back once again tomorrow breaking down the Stanley cup finals with tom vecchio to get that show and all others as they are posted make sure you're subscribed to covering the spread on the on apple Podcasts, spotify wherever it may be and also check us out on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV Plus. If you got any questions, I am on X at Jim Sonis. You can also find FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets for the Belmont Stakes back again once again tomorrow to break down the Stanley Cup Finals. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.